Hello, Odd Job Dewey here, and today we have a tale of two doors. The door on the left is flat and sleek and boring. The door on the right, the slab door, is uh, mm, overused in most homes. Very common uh, door itself has little squares at the top, has some uh, longer rate right, rectangles will go down. Like I said, just over here flat. And uh, the purpose of this video is actually the door on the left has got to go, and the door on the right is going to be installed. And uh, looking them over, besides, you know, just the look, some people just want to change out the door just so they have a different look. Some people want to change out the door because they got a hole in it. This one here, though, I'll zoom up on the handle because uh, after much uh, looking over and stuff, I was like, huh, let me try this handle. It works, but it also goes like that. Right? It's really weak there. Now, sure, there's probably things out there for that, but uh, that's not what we're doing here. So, uh, step one on this quest is if you just want to replace a, the door, you might get lucky. Well, I shouldn't say you might get lucky. If you buy a door that, that comes pre-hung, has its own frame around it, and that's great now, but it's kind of like a little waste of money usually because you don't need that frame. And um, in this case, the knob, the hinges, all that will be transferred over to this door over here. Uh, hopefully by the end of the video quite successfully. So, where I started off with was measuring. I took my trusty measuring tape and I measured the old one. And I got it uh, pretty exact, you know, down to the sixteenth of an inch. And then uh, on the other side, I got that down to, what did I get it down to? No, I measured it. I measured so it matches this one. The height, 80 inches on both. The width, um, 30 or 32, can't remember anymore. The depth, uh, one and uh, three eighths on both of them. So they're almost identical fit. Now all we gotta do is uh, make it so it fits right. So things you can't really change or don't, don't necessarily want to change is that the hinges are already installed in the door frame where it's going to go. So we're going to transfer over the hinge information from this door to that door. And then of course the knob and that's pretty much it. So there is one more thing on this thing which is the uh, little burn, the little door stopper so it doesn't hit the wall, spring thing. That will probably be transferred over in time and uh, I don't know, but the important things about this one here is, is the door on the right, as I had, it comes to you, comes to you usually with a prime, a cheap little prime on it usually maybe. So we already primed that and painted it and let it dry. And uh, it's important because uh, I show you here. It's important that we pay attention on this because this particular door. Just like that, you see? You see that? That particular door has now changed colors. Yes. Not quite as right, white. It's more like a purplish bluish color or something. And so that part of the door is going to be on the inside. The white part is going to be sticking outside of the, where it's going to be hung at. So that's important to keep in mind when we're attaching the hinges, per se, and the doorknob. Unless you want to just lock somebody in the room, but uh, yeah. So, start with, I'm gonna get this into position. I'm gonna take off the uh, bottom, not the bottom, I'm gonna take off this doorknob here, see? And uh, I might have to pop the, this pair has, has been installed. I might have to pop the uh, ring off on the other side of it. Because usually you have doorknobs that are secure from the inside. So it's going to flip it around and get it back on point. Like so. Okay. Like that, see? And then I'll uh, get my transforming screwdriver to. Uh, Slot mode, slot, mm. and uh, just kind of pry this. There's like a ring usually here. 
kind of pry up like this and like that and it pops off, see? And yes, I can see in the back that there is screws there, but this isn't coming off because this handle here is to come off with a hex key. So, I'm going to go retrieve such hex key, and there's a little um, spot right back in here. If you have these at home, you'll notice that there's like a little uh, hex bolt. And uh, let me get to work on that. Okay, so I loosened up the little uh, hex nut in there. I didn't re uh, bolt, bolt nut? Yeah, bolt. Screw. Anyways, yeah, I loosened it up here, so this just slides right off. And uh, you don't take it out, you just leave it in bed there. And uh, set that aside for later. And then the spill reinforce just pops off. Put that aside, and now we got uh, Phillips screws on this one. Two of them. And uh, you know, you know how it works, loosen it up. These already seem fairly loose. Maybe you can take them all out, but sometimes. You don't have to remove them all. You just do it like that, and there's a way you can twist this thing here, and it pops out. But uh, this ain't that kind. So I'll take these screws all the way out. Keep in mind that the rest of the doorknob could fall off on the other side at any second once I get these things removed. These are the fairly long screws that go all the way through the other side. Set them aside. Uh, so it's not to do them. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Actually, I'll get back to the rest of it. And, uh,. Okay, well, it's hard to tell here, but uh, right up here, there's a uh, two and three eighths marker and a two and three quarters marker, and there's this little thing here that pops down and goes over, kind of like this. Yeah, not very much movement, but that's if you have a you know a deeper uh, offset doorknob. Now down there, you can see where it came out of. Looks kind of like that, and if you look real closely. You can see it's kind of split on the left side. What's in there? Anyways, split on the left side. So that's another reason why this door's gonna go by the way. Okay, now, that, now that's done. We got uh, this up here to deal with, right? You guys have seen these before. They go on the door, the cat's usually kind of like this. Um, anyways, so that right there. I believe these things, you kind of unscrew with your hand, like that, and it pops off the wire. There's actually a screw up here with a metal base plate. And uh, in this case it's a Phillips screw. And so, we're backing out. And um, yeah, this is something that, you know, we transfer over to the, the new door. There's actually the second one's had installed in there. This door's been around a while. Okay. 
is that part there. And last but not least is the hinges. But first we'll do a little setup here. Okay, now starts the extra important part. Besides the size of them. And I took that doorknob off on the, which is the far side down there. Hinge side up here. And I made sure, so this one right here, like I said, has the, uh, you know, I sound them together, button the ends up so they're copacetic. Right? They're next to each other. And if I assume you can kind of see the color differentiation here. So that's, we know that's the inside door part. And this one here, uh, on the back side bottom there, it has the, uh, the part where the little brrrm spring was at, right? So, we know what we got here is the right orientation for where these doors are going to go. Now what I'm going to take here is a uh, right angle and a pencil. And I'm just going to go down and mark the hinge lines. And I'll put them together, slap this on there. And uh, making sure I got it right on there. I'll hinge it like so. And this side here, mark that hinge line like so. There. Now I'll continue on down and finish that up with the markings. So we got the, uh, the hinge screws removed from that middle hinge and uh, so pop it off. Double check it on my my um, scribed ones here. And that's, uh, that's, that's fitting pretty tight. So that's okay. And now there's a couple uh, okay, I'm going to start this hinge here. This hinge, hinge here, as you can see, um, they go the distance. They go pretty much all the way across, and there's plenty to hang out in the back, right? So as they are now, they sit flush against the uh, the front part of the door. You know, fits it like this right here, and it goes right to the flush front part right in here. So we're gonna transfer it over here. Now then, I measured this, and it's about a sixteenth of an inch thick. Not a whole lot, which is which is fine. And now there's other hinges out there, you know, some have curves and stuff, and some don't go all the way to the front. But I'm not a hingeologist per se. So if you have one, you might have to adjust to yours. Or, uh, you know, when you transfer them over, maybe you have like a, a little lip here in front, you just measure and transfer it over. Right? The best way to do it is, would be to do your side lines here, here, or top and bottom, and then take off your hinge and measure how much you have here left over and then scribe down the new door and then basically send your hinge in there and draw around it. Okay, because uh, some of them are curved, not, 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 not sharp like this one. And uh, back, to, back to ideas. So, to remove this material here, there is the, uh, the old school way, the chisel. Nice, uh, shiny, nice, huh? And uh, hopefully sharp. And you have the uh, straight part and the chisel part, with chisel, right? There's other chisels that have both uh, beveled sides on both, and that's not, that's not what you want. You want straight side, beveled side. And when you attack at this, you want the straight side going towards what you want to keep, okay? I got me uh, safety spectacles donned on my face, because, you know, it's going to get medieval here a little bit. And uh, I'm just going to line this up with that line I've done and give it a little tap. And try to get in there to go the same way. Uh, you know, don't, don't burn, burn. Get in there level. Now move it over and tap again. This is a, I'm going to go with, I think, half inch. Yep. I can certainly go inch, but this is going to give me a little more finer detail. And right towards the edge. Okay, I'm gonna rotate around, do the other side to get it lined up. You might notice I kind of rock it back and forth though as I tap along. That's fine, just as long as that last one is uh, straight. And when I try to go down 
to a sixteenth, or even even less. Maybe like just a thirty second. Yeah. Let's get this started. Then, once you feel like you got that good, you can start removing material. Don't mind that, it's made of metal. Now, to move the material, I uh, attack it with the bevel side down. And bevel side. And I just kind of uh, start right where I was there, and kind of uh, like this. I'm going to dig it down, I flip over, and go like that. Keep in mind, um, I don't want to dig in too deep, I want to just go layer by layer. On this, uh, where the new hinge is gonna go. And you notice I, I start from here or I start here and I work this way. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna keep working at this for a little bit and get a nice and uh, cut out. Alright, so you see it kind of fits in there nice and flush. And uh, not too bad, eh? So, the other uh, tramp thought on these here that I'll do for the uh, other ones is uh, if you have happened to have a piece of technology such as this here, a hand router, and you just need more than just the router, you also need a bit like this here. Um, even though it's circular, of course, it's like a straight router bit. And, uh, it is probably a uh, half inch. Half inch, huh? And we've got tape on that thing. Three eighths, half inch. I call it half inch. And you can still use three quarters of an inch, five eighths. But half inch is what I got here. So, to do this thing here, you got to uh, get your router. And um, hopefully, it comes with some extra part stuff here, right? Right, goes like this here. You have a little window to look at it. And this one here has a switch up here that has lock, shaft, and unlock. Okay, if you're gonna run it, you want that shaft unlocked. If you're gonna change the bit, you want it locked. Now, this thing here should be where it's not moving. Can't quite tell. Like do here is that uh, we got a wrench here comes with it, and said bit goes right in this holder. Okay, and then you can tighten it down. There's a another open window over here. I'm mean, gonna take this off, but I'll leave it there. This window here, open it up, and uh, put it in there. Ah, wrench comes with it. Hopefully and tightens it. And since it has that lock and shaft thing, then spin around. So you can snug it down pretty good. Okay, and I will put the wrench aside, not so I lose it, just so I have it again. Okay, the other part of this is you got this uh, cord. You have this thing here. This locks the uh, adjusting part. So I'm gonna loosen that up. That someone's already overly put in there. Of course, it might be set just right. And you have this, uh, you have this right here to share a gauge. I'm sure there's like real terms to this stuff, but uh, this rotates. So if I rotated it that way, where it's right about, uh, what, 9 sixteenths, you check down here, this is probably 9 sixteenths out. If I were to go back the other Oh, trickery. I'm going to go back the other way to, uh, that way there, it's already sucked in, so, 
<sighs> Mine spin off from each other. So, what we'll do here is we'll get that little measuring device and basically get this thing out. Well, actually, there's a quicker way to measure this device. Get this hinge off, right? Because we want this thing to be, uh, you know, right up there. So, right now, it barely touches the top, the bottom of the hinge. So, I will uh, spin it. Now it's come out too far. So I'll spin it back a little bit. And if I know which way to spin it, it'll be much quicker. Okay, that there does it. Then, the other part back here, tighten this thing up again. So hopefully that doesn't pop in and out. Or tighten it down pretty overly tight, but don't break it. I mean, it's all plastic. Yeah, some, some metal. Check again. Yeah, right there with it. Make sure I'm not quite, uh, yes, yeah, so I'm quite a little bit beveled. So I'm going to fine tune this to get that nice, my sixteenth of an inch out. And, uh, yeah, get ready to go. Okay, that's fine there. Uh, this port here faces away from you. You have this little viewport you can kind of look through. And uh, some of these have a light. That's handy. I don't know if this one has light or not. So, shaft, unlock position, give it a little spin. Ow, could be sharp. That needs some power. There's electricity here. I'm gonna unravel the cord. And, um, have to have some power here. Definitely, I protect on this one. Righto. Got my safety spectacles on, power cord on, and draped over the shoulder out of the way. Give it a little. This one has a, a thumb plunger down here. Hard to see, but you gotta hold that down and then click the button for it to both work. And it doesn't work. Because you have to plug in the other part extension cord into an outlet of 120 volts. And not just have it laying on the floor behind you. Hmm. All right, there. So, push that button down. Woo! See that? It does have a light. Now then, we'll just kind of get up on this spot down here. This might be a little loud. I don't know, not too loud, but uh, you might want some ear protection. And uh, so right in there, you see the two lines maybe? Right there, right there. We're gonna hopefully go in between them and take the material out, starting at an edge and working in the, into the uh, material. I got it kind of held there. Uh, between two cheap saw horses. So let's see if it works. smooth there, eh? Ah! So, it's looking nice. And um, I'll continue this and just bore out that stuff there. And we'll go back to the next step. step. And, uh, yes, I do this outside usually. <clears throat> it doesn't make the atmosphere that good in here. But, um, you had some fans blowing the stuff out. And, can wear a mask. Probably gonna do. Okay. But I'm not going to breathe either. So, safety first. Outside is the best way to do it, but this is still a working area, so here I go. All right, now that I've fumbled through this part, uh, routers. Yeah, so uh, if you're like me, a little weak on your router game, um, sure, there's plenty of things that could happen. In this case, um, I got a little bit of a drop down 
right there, it's hard to see it, but it's right, right there, where, and uh, it's on the other side too, right there, more apparent, at the top, uh, drop down, with my finger, boink, drop down, and so what that is, is when you're routing and you have the smooth part of the router there, um, it, it runs off your stuff you already did here, and it, it you know, drops down. So, in this case, I was coming across here, I had already done this stuff here, got to over here, and didn't have a good hold on it to, to remember that it's going to drop down. And so this part fell off the lip, and it gouged it pretty good here. But I, I peeled it, I recovered from that, and, uh, you know, you put this on, nobody's going to know that part. Now the other thing is lighting. Lighting is very important. Had I had better lighting or paid attention more, um, I would have had this part there, you see? Shameful. Now that there... When the door is shut, no one's going to see it at all. It's going to be behind the, uh, the part of the door frame. But when it's open, people could see it, and uh, of course at the bottom, so maybe not. But the key takeaway here is, is I have something for that. I'll mix up some of that uh, wood putty crap, I mean stuff, <clears throat> and pack it in here, and then come back, sand it, prime it, paint it, and it's going to be uh, nice again. Yeah. Okay, so we're basically done with this part here, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix this first. And it's, to, to you guys, it'll just be like hardly even a second. To me, it's going to be like five days. So, I'll be back. In a jiffy. There, look much better now, right? Nice end in there. Pretty good fit. A little tight, not too tight. And, uh, um, yeah. I mean, if you notice, uh, this is a backup door. So, let's talk screws. Now, what was holding in the old hinges from the old doors was uh, was these here. Ah, you see that? These here are a, uh, you know, commonly referred to as a drywall screw. And if you look closely, this here's a coarse one. Right, the threads are farther apart. A little bigger. This here is a fine one. And they're uh, tighter. And you know, they mix these both in to hold these uh, hinges on. And, well, it worked, you know. So, what happens is, I think as normal doors come with hinges close to something like this, itty bitty guy. And, after opening and closing and maybe taking them off and doing things, they might get a little bit loose. And they get too loose, what you do is you can just, uh, well, one thing you do is drive a longer screw through if, as long as there's wood there. Another thing, of course, you can do the matched stick trick or, uh, some kind of, you know, powdered stuff, uh, that dribble bonding wood stuff you can put in there too. But the key thing here is what you want is, when you're choosing the screw, is you want something like this. Sure, the drywall one, it goes flush to the surface here. And so, this one right here is a little bit beefier, or maybe about the same thing that would come with it normally. And uh, that there goes pretty nice, pretty flush. Uh, this little one here is actually, I think, for another part of the door, because it goes in and it sinks in a little bit deep. So that's 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 not really get good. Plus, it's too small, too uh, doesn't have the thickness. Now, what I've decided to replace uh, <coughs> these drywall screws with is, ta-da! These construction drywall screws, right? They're coated. And um, indoor outdoors, I believe. Thicker, coarse threads. And not only do they fit here and flush it down pretty good, um, I have uh, enough of these to do both doors. So, next, what you want to do is, or at least what I do, you don't have to, this comes in easier this way, is you got your part here, and remember, you don't want too far this way, you want this, this edge here flush with the flush edge of the door. Okay, so that's right about like that. 
And you really don't want to cock it. Because remember, this hinge has to go back to another hinge. Now then, you can take a marker pencil and, and dot the eyes in the middle here. But what I end up doing normally is I take this, uh, whatever screw I'm using here, and I find a drill bit that just about cores out the center, <laughs> cores out the center of that screw or so. Right? And then, I'll just simply, since it's all set up, find the center and uh, do a little starting hole there. Like so. Up here like so. And down here. Double check. Uh, a little bit off up here. I didn't go too deep of course yet. That and like that. Better if you did the first time right. Okay, good enough. So I've got my holes marked, take this thing off, and then I can bore down to what I think is needed. Get it straightened. And of course, let the drill bit do the work. Don't, don't push hard. This is soft wood. Well, we have a sharp bit. Uh-huh. Got it like that. And even though this one here is close to the edge a little bit, boring it down is going to make it just happy without having to split any wood. off here. Put the hinge back on. And basically install your screw of choice. Let's start the middle here. And yeah, you can use a, a powered screwdriver, of course. Um, make a lot quicker work of this. If you have a multi-speed one, you know, I'd suggest leave it on number one. Slow speed it. And, what is, and even with this, I still drive them in kind of slow, listen for cracking. And I get you right before the uh, top's about to make contact, and I switch to a hand version and snug it down. Because like I said, soft wood. And I don't even snug it all the way. I'll do the other two and snug them all down so they're all equal. All right, the other two here, snug them down, make sure they're all good. So let me finish this here up and we'll get the uh, hinges on. Well, finish the hinges. Okay, now that the hinges are in place on the side there, and uh, not this door, they've been taken off, and the door's actually in place and hung, uh, there's, there's one more thing I forgot to mention about that. The hinges, try to keep track of what if you take it off from the top, middle, and the bottom to make sure you put it back, top, middle, and bottom, on the new door. It may or may not you know, matter, but uh, they might have worn a little bit differently over the years, depending on how old this door is. Or you just do brand new hinges, but uh, Let's do that. Anyways, so, doorknob. We need one of those there, right? That hole there should be a two and an eighth inch round. And, uh, actually diameter crossed. 
and its offset is if it's a standard door, it's either going to be a what two and three eighths or two and three quarters from this edge here to the middle of the hole here. And instead of trying to take a tape measure and you know stay in there, measure to the crest, the top here, you know, of either hole. So I got this here. I'm just gonna adjust it a little bit, fix that thing up. And to get it right in there, right over the top, that there is two and three eighths. So I know that measurement. Now I guess you could slap the doors back to back and stick a pencil through there, through the hole, and draw it to the, the, the location on the next door. But otherwise, you measure it two and three eighths off, and then if you want to do it this way, uh, if the door, the new door fits on the hinges, measure from the top down to the middle of that hole. Otherwise, you know, like a tangent off to this side here. And then you can just draw an X there and drill through your uh, two and an eighth inch hole. Now I happen to have a little kit here that I'm going to be playing with. So uh, we'll do, we're going to do method uh, B, the other method, where I'm going to go into the room where it's hanging and uh, see how it is with the, the, the strike plate on the other side of the, on the frame, door frame. I'm just going to draw a line. Okay, so this is the new door hung. And uh, when you're putting it back in, you might have a little trouble of getting the hinges up. This is where two kill might help if you, if you know somebody. But it's okay to loosen the screws. I mean, these pins are out, but on one side of the other plate, loosen them up a little bit, get the pins all in, make sure the door works, and then tighten up all the screws. And that's gonna have your door back in alignment there. Now over here is the strike plate and basically what I'm going to do here is right about the center of it, it's hard to see, but right about the center where the hole's at, I'm going to mark it with a uh, line in the door. So right about here is going to be my middle. Now take the door back off. And uh, take it back in the uh, spray workshop. And in theory, I probably don't have to take the door off, but I'm going to take it with better lighting. All right, and there's my mark. And uh, what we've done now, we've got the door off, we laid it down, some two by fours, no, some sawhorses, and look what showed up here. We got this Irwin door lock jig uh, installation kit, two side jig. Fifth standard doors and back sets. Um, never used those before. So, let's dig into it. Already cut the dangerous plastic part off. We've got a drill bit here. And we got the jig with uh, saw blades. I'm trying to get this without dropping it everywhere. Mm -hmm. Piece of paper, we'll put this aside. Inside this jig here we've got a, I believe it's a one inch circular saw. Circular saw? Round saw? I don't know. Piece of foam, which I think is just for packing. Maybe you're supposed to stick in your ears. So that goes in there. All right, figure that part out. And then, uh, we got our probably two and an eighth inch saw blade like this. And I believe when I was looking at saw blades, um, good ones probably cost the amount that this kit costs, even more. And this one here, this is uh, interesting. This one here is for your um, hinges, so if you want to do with that, but that's already been done. Stick that back in there. And this little magic thing here is a the drill bit, huh? This is for your drill routing. I don't know about that, but I'll set aside here. And this here's a little jig, a jig for that thing, right? So set that aside. We got this here. 
first things first, two and three eighths, or uh, two and three quarters. We want two and three eighths. So I guess you just squeeze this back and slide it back to that notch. Then you need to center it up where you want it. So looking back at our spot there, find it again. Mm-hmm. Close there. Too close. Right there. We're going to take the uh, right angle and uh, pencil and run this line both uh, this way here and I'm going to run it downwards too. Because really, like I said, uh, this way here's all you need to do, probably. Downwards. Now that, now that I got that there, since I know that that should be the middle of the latch, I can just measure out my 2 and 3 eighths and bap, put the center of the hole saw there and go to town. But I am not. I'm going to follow instructions to the best I can on this. So, this here has a couple of holes here. That right there goes right in your door, and then you um, make sure it's set up to where you want it, and you drill in to the side there. Your, uh, you can see that. Okay. So the couple of holes, you drill in here, and those holes are going to be reused for your, for your what? So they're reused for your, uh, your door latch. So they say, I can be lying, they can be lying, who knows? I'm not lying, I read the instructions. So, let me get me a little uh, trusty pilot hole drilling drill, and make sure I'm on point with this, and this here. Mm -hmm. There's got some screw holes in there. Right. That part's done. And find screws here. Mm -hmm. Right, it came with my uh, uh, blurry stuff. Came with my doorknob and the screwdriver. So I'll sink those in from this side. Probably not over strength, but you know, snug enough. Hold this puppy in its place. I guess not a puppy, it's a jig. Anyways. Snug. Snark. Now then. This here we got. No, oh, go that way. This little thing here, mandrel. You unscrew this nut. This little kit says uh, the sides, the sides, the uh, a drill. So the drill, tape measure, probably to help find out where to go there. Uh, looks like the screwdriver, a chisel, and a little mallet for the chisel. Okay. Now, it didn't say anything about a wrench, so we'll see if this is all hand tightened stuff. So I'm going to do with the uh, two and a eighth inch first, put this through here. There's a part where it should pull up like that. And then 
we screw this part here down all with bare hands hmm there you go no that's not right <laughs> okay pay attention so there's a flat in here and there's a hole in there we go Snug it down. Tight. Then I can put this in my drill. Snug, whoops, snug that up. And uh, this is different. Usually, usually the uh, this bit is like super long, but it's just going to really hold it because you want to you want to get inside this framed part here first. And let me tell you. There's some play in there. I don't like that. I don't like play. And then I'm going to put my glasses on. And I'm still going to shoot for the center of that area. And of course go as straight as I can. Now this happens to foul up. That's going to be horrible because I only got one chance at this. Inside. Uh, uh, uh. Now, mm, I'll flip it over. All right, and do this side here. Same thing. I'll mm. should have cleaned my bit beforehand. So let's just do it real quick here. Real quick, I'm just going to back it out, undo this nut, and pop it out like, like nothing. No, just kidding. Pop like so. Without, um, you know, without the whole chopping my finger off and stuff. Mm. Yeah, but pop it like so. Set that down. And uh, then back this thing out and set someplace else. Nice little souvenir. Reassemble this. And if you do it the right way, it goes much quicker. And back in the chuck. And it's ready to go. Whoa. Center it up good. This time I poured all the way through it. the next position. Okay, so I got the door back in this position and I braced it on some, uh, well not braced, I put a, 
some thick cardboard pads on each both sides to give it a, a little level and above off the hinges. And then here's our our business part we're working on. And just for enjoyment, I quickly changed out the, the bit and got the one inch ready, see? Yeah. And same thing. So for this time, I just need to do one hole right down the middle here. Keep it all nice in the middle and the up and downsies. This is this is when it's nice to have a drill with a uh, bubble in the end. Yeah, okay, it's looking good right there. Okay, we're through. Hmm, plugged. Okay, so we have that part done, and I believe now we can do the front face and template. So I can take those screws out, and um, we'll see what's next. Okay, so now in the name of science, I'm gonna test this thing out. Why not? We got this uh, template thing here. It has a couple of pokey holes. This came with the kit, and uh, pokey holes go in your screw holes here. Like so. Get in the screw hole. Because they're nice and easy, folks. Oh. And uh, really, that's kind of weird because the uh, screw holes here are different sizes. Hmm. Hmm, what do they do? Ah, eh, they did nothing. Okay, that's in there. This one here. Is, uh, not in there? In there? Not nervous. That's not there. Uh, well, science must wait for another day. Okay, try it again. Screw hole and screw hole. Right. I think I'm in there. I'm in there one. Okay, then we got this thing here. This thing is a little bitty drill bit router bit thing. And uh, let's see if it works. Chuck it up and uh, kick it to the power level two. And you just kind of, uh, there's a, this, this outer part and there's a inner part here, a small one. And that small one goes into your template groove. Okay, so right away, mm, I don't like it. <laughs> um, instead, what I'm gonna do is uh, find my, my little latch here and a pensola. I'm going to put this in here, and I'm going to uh, draw around it. Okay, so I just took the uh, 
I'll take it in there, trace around the pencil, line up the holes here with the holes, yeah, you know, here and here, and all right, nothing like switch your backup camera. Um, after you've killed off the battery, so here we got that right there. You can see it's uh, drawn out to kind of like this right here, all around it, and uh, the holes, you know, match up with the holes up here. So now I'm just gonna use that router and route it out. Not that one that came with it, because that seems a little, mm, a little chintzy, but uh, the real router. And I'm gonna start it in the big hole, boop, boop, right there, and you know, work my way, way around, and it should be pretty nice. Um, what to say, what to say, what to say. Um, I don't know. Cameras. Mm. Well, as you can see, it's in there, and once again, a little bit off. Eh. Mm. Poor routing skills. Anyways, same thing with the other issue with the router. Um, pack it with wood filler if need be, but I'm going to put some screws in here. And then uh, put the handle back on, and then it'll be ready to hang and try out. So I'm gonna reassemble the handle assembling stuff and uh, get to hanging. And uh, I can pack it with the wood filler and let it dry and sand and try and lot of stuff later. Okay, I got the door back hung again, and uh, as you can see there, it's right about where it should be. Gives it a little shut here and there. Latches nicely. Take an eraser, get this away, and uh, this here's done, all right? So if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below. And, uh, you know, I got the pin mostly in. I'm taking the door back off so you guys are carpeting here, I guess. And, uh, yeah, questions, comments, let me know. And uh, thanks for watching. How to do a, a door changeover from that boring thing to this one here. All right. I'm out of here.